Hello friends, my name is Christopher, and this is the story of how I fell in love with restoring antique furniture. Well, it all began a couple years ago when I was watching YouTube, as one does, and a video was recommended for me about this piece of furniture that a guy from Minnesota had found on the side of the road, taken home, and restored. Links to that channel down below. I was immediately captivated, watching the process of taking something, stripping off the finish, patching holes, applying new fasteners, getting out divots, etc., etc., and essentially breathing new life into something that was neglected, it captivated me. And I knew that I had to start doing something like that. So I started acquiring projects as one does, uh, things of my own, things that were given to me. And then this COVID-19 came about and all of us have been encouraged to stay indoors. And that has increased my productivity with projects in my basement. And this became the time for me to finally do some of those renovation pieces. So, I'm new to it, I'm learning a lot, and I completely love it. What I like the most, aside from getting pretty new things, which are old things that have been renewed, is that all the pieces that I've done so far have a story to them, and I imagine that I am working with the original maker who created these things. And it's neat, it's kind of like time traveling. Is like this is something that my dad made in the 70s. Uh, there's another project that my grandpa made, I think, in the 50s or 60s. There's a chair that was made in the 30s, and it's like I'm right there with the maker here now in 2020. It's pretty cool. So let's just dive right in with this jewelry box. Uh, this was an interesting piece. Uh, this is a jewelry box that my father made in shop class in high school. Um, I'm dating it as 1975 and it's, it's fun. I remember growing up with this. I think my mom had it as one of her jewelry boxes. And I did a lot of different things to it. Uh, I didn't feel the need to strip it. The finish was pretty darn good. Uh, I did flock everything. Most of the fasteners were kind of defunct. These two hinges were good. This was completely broken. Um, I needed to fix some other stuff. I kept the uh, internal dividers here, but I, like I said, I flocked this, I flocked this. I took out the yellow suede felt. Um, nothing wrong with the color. It's quintessentially 70s, but I have learned not to be uh, timist against colors that are associated with a certain time because, you know, color preferences is cyclical. This, this golden rod in here may be super chic in another couple years, so I kept it. Also, this gold and black, these are the colors of my, where I got my master's degree. Need to be Washkosh, so it had a tie-in to me. Took care of those, uh, refinished the inside of all of these as well. The openings here were all wonky, so I made them as rectangular as I could, except for the divots that passed the outside of the rectangle. Um, good storage on the inside there. There's no false bottom to it. I consider adding a false bottom because essentially this whole spot from here down is unused, but maybe that's a future project. And I did felt the very bottom of it so that it can slide along the top of my dresser here and I don't have to worry about it scratching anything up. The exterior, I did do a little bit of light sanding where necessary, and also there was a huge gap between this bottom piece and the middle piece here. I filled it in with putty, stained it, and then um, finished it with, I believe, linseed oil. And it gave a lovely finish, it's a lovely texture. I think it has a good smell to it now too. And uh, it's a nice jewelry box.
This is the story as I understand it. This chair belonged to my wife's maternal grandfather. He was a principal in Michigan, and several decades ago when they were uh, renovating the school, they offered some of the furniture to the faculty. So he took a desk, which you can't see, but that's where my computer is right over there, where I do editing, and this chair. I love it. I think it was made probably in the 1920s or 1930s, given the fact that it's all um, handmade and the, uh, the metal action piece underneath, which you'll see footage of, looks like cast iron and that just gives me this feeling that it's pretty darn old. Um, I think that it was handmade, not machine made, because some of the curvature here, they're, I mean, to the eye it looks the same, but when you really get up close you can tell it's not the same curve. Um, so it was probably done by hand, by a hand saw or an early scroll saw, etc. Same with some of these spindles, they're all pretty inconsistent. Uh, curves in here, um, and that's wonderful. I love it. Uh, it gives a great handmade quality, and it's, it's beautiful. Obviously, it's all solid. Uh, it's solid oak, in fact. Some of the things that I had to do with it, uh, they were pretty simple. I, I took the mechanism off. There was a great big crack along the bottom here. I opened that up and then glued it, and of course, I smoothed it out a little bit, top and bottom. I did uh, reapply um, the finish to this, several coats of a uh, polyacrylic, just because of the use that it gets with my butt and all. I wanted it to be nice and thick and uh, stand up, I know it sounds kind of gross, but to stand up to sweat. You know, if I'm sitting in the summer day and I got a sweaty back, I don't want that seeping into this. Uh, the wheels and the mechanism that actually hold the legs together, they were missing several fasteners. So I was able to find some that were comparable to the original old fasteners and get them on. I also oiled up, uh, oiled up the machine or the action, item, action piece underneath there. And um, yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. So um, applying the finish to this really brought the top coat up. Um, got off some of the paint and I chose not to like take an iron to any of the divots and lift those up because it adds to the character. It's a lovely old piece and I'm happy, to, happily, wow, I'm so happy to properly display it in our house and get rid of my old um, broken down college chair. And lastly here we have this footstool on top of one of the tables that I made earlier this year. Three pieces to it. First off the story. This was made, I'm going to say sometime in the uh, 1950s or 1960s. It was made by my maternal grandfather and I loved restoring this. This was a product that was probably made out of necessity and out of materials that Grandpa had on hand. Uh, the old top here underneath the cushion, and you can see that it's a little crooked, um, this top piece here that would seal on the cushion was made from wood that had just had so many staples in it and nails that it was pretty much falling apart. 
The legs, I found out uh, these were custom made. Uh, it looks like originally the piece was like this and then he added some wings to it. This is a nicer piece of dark wood. It was the only really nice piece of wood. So when I stripped it, I, I was just expecting it to be a white wood, but nope, it was a dark wood. Um, so it's got lovely grain to it. It's really very fun. Um, I kept the original foam, which I was able to remove pretty decently. Um, instead of just throwing it away, I figured if it gets covered, if, she, if this is for my mother, if she wants to reuse the foam, she can. Otherwise, when she gets it reupholstered, she can get a new piece of foam right away, depending on the density and everything else. Um, over this here. I made the top piece fit a little bit tighter, so it's nice and snug. Anyways, I had some poplar sitting around, and that's what I chose to make this out of. And uh, it's, these were just a copy and paste of the design that was already there before. Um, if she wants to paint it, um, poplar is definitely a great wood for painting. Otherwise, I think it has a nice white cover, but I think when it gets covered um, or upholstered, that'll, the fabric will come around and go underneath here and you won't see it and it'll sit nice and tight. But this has an opening on the inside here. Uh, if you wanted to store anything in there, I ended up felting it because the bottom was pretty nasty. I kept the top unfelted because in here, right there, it says, Hi, honey. And I'm assuming that is my grandfather's writing to my grandmother from many, many decades ago. This was an interesting project on a lot of reasons. I told you about the design things, but here in all four corners, and I've never seen these kind of things before, some sort of diagonal fasteners to help with 45 degree angle joinery. They've got this wobbly uh, design to them and I think they're really cool. They're metallic and they show up nicely. Now, uh, the legs were completely broken off, so I was able to fill in all the holes and uh, straight up glue them on. Uh, this is not perfectly flat and I chose not to correct that because it's going to a home that is carpeted So when it's done on nice thick plush carpet, you'll never know my hardwood floors or this tabletop obviously you do see that but um, Final project it won't matter This is fun. I like working on something and refitting something that My grandpa had actually made. It's pretty cool. As you can see I did make that pretty tight <coughs> Great to, great to see that in use once we can actually go out to stores and upholstery places open back up. So that is that. As I said, there are more things on my docket downstairs, but my workshop is full of boxes and other things that I have had to pull out of other spaces in my basement as I'm painting the ceiling, walls, and floor and renovating that space. So um, what have you renovated? Have you done boxes and chairs and tables and things as well? Uh, have you been holding on to some project for years and saying, oh, I'm going to get to that, but you just haven't done it, you should do it. As always, be sure to leave a comment and a like down below if you enjoyed this video. There are more like it that YouTube can recommend for you. By all means, check it out. Thanks for watching, and until next time, bye-bye.